seems like Purdue is in the midst of a turnaround season. So is Iowa State. The Cyclones visiting the Kansas State Wildcats. Farmageddon in the Little Apple and the regular season finale for both of these programs. Good afternoon, Anish Shroff alongside Ahmad Brooks. Roddy Jones will join us in a moment. Iowa State with a chance to put a period on one of the best regular seasons in school history. And it all started in the offseason when Iowa State head coach Matt Campbell went to Joel Lanning, yeah. a former starting quarterback, and said, Joel, I want you to play defense. And Lanning's response was, sure, anything for the team. Well, his attitude and humility have been the driving force behind this team's turnaround. And to the people of Ankeny, Iowa, he's like the local Bo Jackson after being All-State in three sports, wrestling, baseball, and football. Joel knows everything, including what it's like to be the starting quarterback and middle linebacker. And now he's the Cyclones' leading tackler. His offensive mind has allowed him to play with great defensive instinct. And though he still plays offense occasionally, he's now a budding NFL linebacking prospect. Meanwhile, Kansas State became bowl eligible last week, and Roddy, Byron Pringle had a big hand in that. Yeah, Byron Pringle gives this run-based Kansas State offense a big play aspect down the field, but it's been a winding road. The junior out of Tampa, Florida, took the road to El Dorado via Butler Community College before coming to Manhattan, Kansas, and after a four-touchdown performance last week, he certainly was thankful on the holiday week, but more than that, he's thankful for his two-year-old son, and guys, if this Kansas State offense is going to perform like they did a week ago, they're going to need some big plays from the nation's leader in yards per catch. Kansas State won the toss. They defer. Iowa State will receive the opening kickoff. Matthew McCrane boots it into the end zone, and the Cyclones will come out at the 25-yard line. It has been a quarterback carousel for Iowa State. Joel Lanning was the starter a season ago before losing his job. He moved to middle linebacker, as Ahmad just talked about. So Jacob Park began the season as the starter, left the team for personal reasons after the first month. Enter fifth-year senior walk-on Kyle Kempt. All he did was lead the Cyclones to a pair of top five wins against Oklahoma and TCU. And then Jeff Nolan started last week for an injured Kemp in a win against Baylor. But it's Kemp back in the starting lineup after he suffered a shoulder injury two weeks ago. And joining Kemp in the backfield, David Montgomery, the Big 12 second leading rusher. And Montgomery on first down into the teeth of that case of defense for a game of three. This is an Iowa State offense, mod that does not beat itself. They have not lost a fumble. They play clean. Kemp, the high IQ quarterback, as the trigger man. Kemp throwing downfield for Allen Lazard, unable to adjust. Lazard, the all-time leading receiver at Iowa State. Ahmad, who are your impact players when Iowa State has the ball? David Montgomery, the running back. He's got beast mode-like qualities when his pads are low and generating downhill power. Alan Lazard, his physical toughness and his frame allow him to be a major threat in the red zone. Trent Tanking demonstrates good concentration in traffic. And Duke Shelley is a competitive, confident quarterback with great demeanor. On third and long. Kemp as Lazard who picks up the first down. Alan Lazard now with a catch of 47 consecutive games, the longest active streak in the FBS. What I love about Kyle Kemp, he shows the capability of throwing guys open just like he did there. Kemp back into the game, he'll throw. He's got Deshante Jones. Jones and Montgomery grew up together in Cincinnati and that's a gain of nine, second and one. And they'll move Jones all over the field. Sometimes he lines up in the backfield. And he's that player for them that really can wreak havoc in the inside with the slot, trying to get him matched up on safeties and get him in positions where he can do what he does best, which is work in the open field.
Montgomery on second and one. And tumbles for a first down. As the Iowa State Cyclones moved the chains on an impressive opening drive. That included a fourth down conversion. Back to Montgomery. He's got a hole. Wrapped up at the 30 after a gain of three. Jade Kirby on the stop. Kirby had 12 tackles last week. And a stunning win by Kansas State in Stillwater. The Wildcats went up by 29 in the second half. Oklahoma State came back, cut it to within five, had the ball late. But the Wildcat defense made a stop. Crony, third down. This was just a poorly thrown ball. They went back to the option route out of the backfield from Crony. It picked up some decent yardage early on in this set of downs. And then this time, Kemp just couldn't connect as the route was there. So here's where you have it. Third down along with red zone. The formula for this is simple. They look to find mismatches with their playmakers. With Montgomery off the field, the guys now are going to be Hakeem Butler, number 18, and number five, Alan Lazard. And Alan appears to be doubled down here at the bottom with a safety and a cornerback. Butler's in the slot. Kemp, high throw intended for Margie Murdoch, and it's fourth down. Yeah. Kansas State has already shown their hand. It appears as though defensively they are going to try to take Alan Lazard out of situations like this. They actually went to triple coverage, had the cornerback inside and underneath, and then they had a linebacker also dropping underneath coverage with the safety over the top. That's the treatment that a guy like Alan Lazard at 6'5", 222 deserves, which should give the other wide receivers some one-on-one -on -one matchups. 36-yard field goal attempt for Garrett Owens is good, and he's now made nine straight field goals from inside 40. Iowa State with a lengthy opening drive. They get three. Iowa State enjoyed a Thanksgiving feast earlier this week. Cyclones and their fans, many reasons to be thankful. Bill Snyder, 78 years young, 40 years the senior of the man coaching against him, Matt Campbell, who's 37 and will turn 38 on Wednesday. Campbell, one of the youngest coaches in college football, had a great run at Toledo, played at Division III powerhouse Mount Union. Dominique Heath on the return. No DJ Reed, he's one of the top kick returners in the country. If Ohio State beats Wisconsin, are they in the college football playoff, Amon? I don't believe so, but I mean, there's a lot. You asked me that question, I'd have to know a bunch of other scenarios that took place in the country, but I don't think so at this point. Why? why and that's why I just said I'd have to know a bunch of other scenarios to tell you why. <laughs> a lot to be played out, man. So they need help. Alex Barnes doesn't. He gets six coming off the game in which he ran for 86 yards and a touchdown. At quarterback for Kansas State is Skyler Thompson making his third start of the season. He's the third different starting quarterback for Kansas State. Struggled in his first career start two weeks ago against West Virginia, but was outstanding last week in a road win against Oklahoma State. Give is to Barnes. And tackled by who else? Joel Lanning who has played close to 900 snaps on defense, offense, and special teams this season. Yeah, he shows good range while watching him on film, his closing ability in short area. And, you know, the staff said earlier that they didn't realize how fast he was until they put him out there defensively, and he surprised them with his speed. Now, this is the third and short situation. Byron Pringle last week versus Oklahoma State was a key target. They like to find some speed cutouts to him. And Skylar Thompson actually was really good on this down a week ago. Against a four-man rush. Thompson, 
has nowhere to go. He'll run out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. And three and out goes K-State. The key you just said was a four-man rush. For Iowa State, this is not a defense that's going to heat up the pocket and bring a ton of pressure. They're going to drop back. Um, cloud up those passing windows and force Skylar Thompson to either beat him with his feet like they did now, rally to the football, or have to make a precise throw. That time there, he couldn't do it. Iowa State three and out. Heck of a start to the game for the slight clones. Nick Walsh is punt. Fielded by Trevor Ryan inside the 20. Ryan with nowhere to go. And a staple for years for Kansas State has been special teams play. Good punt coverage after a 50-yard kick by Walsh. Kent has an open receiver. And Iowa State able to move the chains. Margie Murdoch, a gain of 16. They're getting right up to the ball to snap this ball. You see what Kyle Kemp is really good at. Buying time, extending plays, and a sharp pass downfield. Crony straight up the middle to the 41. So many profiles of courage on this Iowa State roster. So many stories of players overcoming adversity. Crony's one of them. A young man who came to campus after a self-inflicted gunshot wound to his hand. Kyle Kemp began his career at Oregon State. Never saw the field. Went to Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. Never saw the field. Walked on to Iowa State and has become a folk hero. Crony, incomplete, tanking all over him, and it's third down. High school valedictorian. Then went to Corvallis. He was a much sought after high school quarterback. The Juco route. And how about the wins against Oklahoma and the TCU in the month of October? Two teams that were ranked in the top five. Colossal wins. And he's been one of the great stories in college football. Near sideline, Lazard with a drop. It would have been short of the first down had he caught it. And the punt team and Colin Downing on for the Cyclones. Yeah, that's two consecutive drops. You hope that the Cyclones wide receivers clean that up. Sheldon Crony dropped the one previously on an option route, and then their All-American wide receiver, Alan Lazard, couldn't hold the football there. And despite Kemp being very accurate, he throws a very soft and catchable pass. He's not the guy that's going to zip one in there and put too much velocity on the ball. The wide receivers and the pass catchers for the Cyclones got to do a better job. Downing boots it away. Here is Heath. A couple of men miss. He turns the corner, accelerates upfield, gets a block. It's a foot race, and he tripped up unless he stepped out of bounds before that. They will mark him down inside the 25 yard line. DJ Reed is the ace return man. He's been out now two games. Last week, Byron Pringle took a kickback. Now, Dominique Heath nearly busted one. Yeah, it was great patience. And for Heath, as a returner, you've got to make the first guy miss. He made the first two guys miss. And then the wall was set up there. Perfect opportunity there for him to get out in front. Excellent return. We saw Byron Pringle change the course of the Oklahoma State game last week with a kickoff return for a touchdown. Now can this offense, with great field position, punch one in after the wonderful return. Thompson will throw. He's got Isaiah Zuber tackled in his tracks by the graduate transfer from Georgia, Reggie Wilkerson. Impact players for Kansas State, Byron Pringle. He demonstrates the ability to get on DB's toes and run right by him. Um, junior fullback Winston Demmel plays with a wide power base and impressive downhill strength when blocking. Joel Lanning, his ability to read plays, dissect him, and get to the ball is unbelievable. And last but not least, nose guard number 76, Ray Lima. Physically intimidating type build, and this kid right here has very good overall size and strength. Play clock down to two, down to one. Warmack. Tornadoes ahead to the 13-yard line. He's going to be a little short 
of the first down. It brings up third down. Brian Peavy, the starting cornerback, number 10 in white, playing for Iowa State despite an arrest on Thursday for an apparent vandalism charge. We were told he would be in the starting lineup and no discipline. Iowa State going to a four-down look, which means they are expecting run on that side of the ball. I should say we were told PB would play. We see him in the game. And now we reach the end of quarter number one. Iowa State with a field goal on its opening drive. Kansas State threatening. Iowa State, Kansas State, Farmageddon, third and two. Kansas State in the red zone. And they're going to the Wildcat. It's Dalvin Wormack, or rather Alex Barnes, who will take the direct snap here. Winston Dimmel, the fullback. Barnes running behind Dimmel with a big block. Barnes bouncing off the tackler, and it's first and goal, Kansas State. 38 in purple. Winston Dibble is the unsung hero of this offense. Yeah, he took it to Willie Harvey, the linebacker there for Iowa State, and clears the way for this running game. And he's, it's very easy to determine where the football is going. But if you're a linebacker, once you get there, you've got to deal with 6'1", 235 pounds of, of pure blocking potential in Winston Dibble. Dimmel, the son of offensive coordinator Dana Dimmel, and Winston, a two-time first-team all-conference fullback. Thompson hands it off. Barnes plunges ahead. Second and goal from the seven. One of the hardest areas to score is when you get down here because then defenses can jam numbers inside of the box to prevent you from running. And if you're, you're Kansas State, Outside of Byron Pringle, maybe the only guy that you trust to win one-on-one -on -one matchups at a consistent rate. So the defense can then force and roll their coverage to him. So for Kansas State right here, more than likely, if they're going to get in, they're going to probably give another rushing attempt here, but they want to get it in via the ground. QB run comes into play here as well. Thompson. As Dimmel pushed out of bounds. It sets up third and goal. Willie Harvey knocked him out. Ball at the three-yard line. Remember, Kansas State, without one of its go-to receivers, Dalton Schoen, he's out with a collarbone injury. Dayton Valentine, the tight end, did not play last week. We have yet to see him today. K-State. A little cagey in terms of how much they reveal when it comes to injuries. This could be a free play. Thompson, stiff arm, end zone, touchdown! I see a flag. Yeah, it appeared as though Ray Lima, the nose guard, the outstanding nose guard for the Cyclones, jumped off sides. But give Skylar Thompson credit, the execution there, the patience. And we saw this last week out of the young quarterback, the redshirt freshman from Independence, Missouri, with an excellent job there of getting behind his blocking and then sliding into the end zone. PAT by Matthew McCrane is good. You get the feeling you're seeing the future of the quarterback position for Kansas State now. A redshirt freshman, Skyler Thompson, gives the Wildcats the lead. K-State faithful have a 7-3 lead. A punt return by Dominique Hagee, setting up a short field, and Skyler Thompson taking it in. And now a flag as Kansas State kicks it out of bounds. Kyle Kemp to throw. Batted down. Will Gary, the all-conference D lineman, former walk-on from Topeka.
Made the play, second down. He's stout. That time they're showing his awareness. Couldn't get to the quarterback. Threw up those big old paws, and that is a big play on first down. And particularly what it does now is it gets in the head of Kyle Kemp because you just don't have those easy passing windows when the defensive linemen are stopping their charge to put up their hands. This offense has been going in neutral and backwards without David Montgomery. Over the middle, there is Alan Lazard. And he is to the 41 of K-State, a gain of 18 wide open in the middle of the field. What I love about Alan Lazard is he's just a big and physical wide receiver who is not scared of going across the middle of the field and catching in traffic. Back to the air. Looking for Lazard in traffic. And it's second and ten. Great job there from Jade Kirby. Plastering right underneath Lazard in the double coverage. Preventing Kemp from getting the target he wanted. He wanted him back on a simple post route once again. Very similar to the in-breaking route he had before. But the Wildcats defended it perfectly. Which now forces them in second and long. And guys, this Kansas State defensive line has done a great job of getting to Kyle Kemp and making him feel uncomfortable. That time, I think he let the ball go a little before he wanted to, and Will Geary made him pay for it. Kemp, 12 out of 19. Hands it off to Mike Warren. Warren taken down at the 36-yard line. Two years ago as a freshman, Warren ran for 195 yards against Kansas State. And he's much more an elusive back. But in these third and medium situations, this is when you really wish you had David Montgomery, who's one of the top pass catchers for this team, but also the most forceful runner, perhaps in the Big 12 and in the country, when it comes to breaking tackles, wearing down defenses, and really bring, bringing the pain to defender. Play clock at five. Camped over the middle, caught by Lazard. Alan Lazard in the, inside the ten. And finally stood up at the five yard line, a gain of 32. And Lazard getting his here in the first half. Back up on the ball here for Iowa State, trying to press the gas. But Kemp here connecting with his top target. Kemp dropped the ball, throwing incomplete. K-State just able to get off the field, almost a 12 men on the field penalty. It's one of the down turns and falls to playing so fast and quickly as Kemp is coming off of the field. And you see Joel Lanning coming on, but when you run with pace like that, sometimes you rush so much that you're not even ready or prepared. And that time there, the center, Julian Goodjones, just snapped one right past Kyle Kemp. Iowa State has not lost a fumble all year. Joel Lanning now, the land ramp package, as you said. Joel Lanning hands it off. That is Crony taking it for about a yard. It sets up third and goal. Fifth carry for Crony. That is a career high. He's just not suited as well as David Montgomery for those inside runs. As Roddy can tell you, in between the tackles, David Montgomery is one of the best in the country. It, uh, defenders just fall off of David Montgomery. It doesn't matter if it's in the open field or between the tackles. It doesn't matter if it's a defensive tackle or a safety. He always makes the first man miss, and that's what you miss when he's out of the game. Camped back in. Lazard at the bottom of your screen. Archie Murdoch in motion. Looking for Lazard. Incomplete. He was covered well by Duke Shelley. And a big third and goal stop. For Kansas State. Yeah, we'll check out this ISO. Duke Shelley got a little handsy with Alan Lazard on the outside edge, really prevented him from being able to turn around. But that, when you are 5'9, 175 pounds, and I understand taking on big wide receivers, you've got to be physical with them. You cannot allow them to get free releases. You've got to stay within their pads and rough them up constantly. Duke Shelley doing a nice job in coverage, that, though that play could have gone either way. Owens with a chip shot field goal. It's good. His second of the game. Been a defensive slugfest through 30 minutes here in Farmageddon. And Kansas State will take a one-point lead to the locker room. 
Seven to six Wildcats coming up next after a quick break. It is the Dave and Buster's halftime show with Chris Cotter and Jonathan Vilma. Back here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium, about ready for the start of the third quarter. Kansas State with a 7-6 lead on Iowa State. And the Cyclones will kick off to begin quarter number three. Byron Pringle takes a knee in the end zone as we take a look at the Pacific Life Game Summary. David Montgomery, the Big 12 second leading rusher, came out of the game for Iowa State after the first series with an apparent knee injury. Had his knee iced coming out of the locker room for the third quarter. Cyclones defense has done a good job holding K-State to just 53 yards. Yeah, they've been stout. They're tackling in space and doing an excellent job right now of containing Skylar Thompson. Iowa State, though, two trips to the red zone. They've had to settle for two field goals. Kansas State, meanwhile, used a big punt return by Dominic Heath to give them a short field, and that set up their lone score. From the 25, Skyler Thompson to the air. Flushed. Taken down after a gain of one by Burnell Trent as we check in with Roddy Jones. Guys, I had a chance to catch up with Iowa State head coach Matt Campbell at halftime. We mainly talked about his team on offense. He said they need to protect Kyle Kemp better and ultimately finish in the red zone. And Anish, you mentioned the fact that David Montgomery left this week on the, after the first drive. He came out with ice on that left knee and in tennis shoes. Now remember, he left last week's game with an ankle injury, and I'm told that it was the same ankle as he has the knee injury on this week, guys. Yikes. We'll keep an eye out on Montgomery. Coaches called him the spark plug, the heartbeat of the Iowa State football team. Dangerous pass, tipped and broken up by Everett Edwards. Came to the Cyclones last year as a graduate transfer from Duke. Yeah, great awareness there from Edwards. He comes off of his man to make a play on the corner out on the backside. And Kansas State has struggled uh, when it comes to their opening drive of the second half. In the last three games, they have not scored on those particular drives. And here, they're faced with a third and long situation. But I'll give them credit. Their last two plays on first and second down, they have tried to take shots downfield. They'll, ha they'll need that right here for a conversion. Thompson, nowhere to go. Running toward the sideline. No gain, and it's fourth down. And we saw this two weeks ago, Roddy, at West Virginia or against West Virginia in this building. Mountaineers run three-man press. When the first option was not open, Skylar Thompson panicked. Yeah, this Kansas State passing game is really predicated on Byron Pringle and Isaiah Zuber winning in one-on-one -on -one situations. When they drop eight, it's really tough for them to, him to find one of those guys. So we saw a lot of, lot of Skylar Thompson scrambling in that game and in this one as well. Here is Trevor Ryan inside his own 25. Tries to Magellan and reverse field, but is erased by Tyler Burns for a loss. Sheldon Crony in the backfield. A career-high five carries already. Archie Murdoch tackled immediately by Duke Shelton. Third catch for Murdoch, a graduate transfer from Illinois. I like what Tom Manning, the offensive coordinator for Iowa State, did there. He pulled a guard from the opposite side and got Kyle Kemp on the move. And I think those are, are positive situations for him. And if they can continue to do that, maybe that'll open up some passing windows on the outside edges of the field that he rolls to. Now Kemp changes things up. Here's Ryan. On the end around. Track star able to pick up a couple, setting up a third and short. And let's see if Joel Lanning comes in in a short yardage situation. 
He will not come in. Actually, yes, he is. Along with their tight end, who's 6'7", 230 pounds, a redshirt freshman from Nixon, Missouri, Chase Allen, who they love to run behind. Lanning up the middle, bulldozes his way across the 30 for a first down. He just ran over Will Gary, who is six foot, 298 pounds. Watch landing here. Like a linebacker just level the defensive tackle. Excellent effort from the starting middle linebacker slash Wildcat player, Joe Lanning. Camp to the air looking for Lazard, and he makes the catch. When we spoke to Joel Lanning, he told us when the coaching staff said, we want you to move to defense, there was zero hesitation. He didn't want to transfer. He said the decision was simple. Continue to play football at Iowa State or give it up. He had no intention of going anywhere else as the Cyclones pick up a first down. And the trickle-down effect of that decision to go from the glamour position of quarterback to linebacker that had a profound impact on this team in the offseason, and all the coaches said that was the start of the success Iowa State had in 2017. Uh, it's amazing, the story. And, you know, and several people from this coaching staff, including head coach Matt Campbell, as Trent Tanking is down on the field for the Wildcats coming off, have said this is the best story in college football, and it is hard to argue it when you see plays like that. And I asked him, what are your goals, Joel, coming into the season? He said, I wanted to get 100 tackles, lead this team in tackles. And he's already accomplished that with, with more football still to be played. He had 20 tackles in a game against Texas. And defensive coordinator John Haycock said, I've been doing this for 35 years. He's never seen anybody do what Lanning has done. And it's not just the transition. He's become an all-conference linebacker. 100%. Roney to the edge and rumbles to midfield. Guys, talking about Joel Lanning, you know, when we talked to him on the phone earlier this week, I asked him, what does it mean to you to get this opportunity? Because he was a guy who said, I, I didn't want to play five snaps on offense for this Iowa State team. But now he's a legitimate NFL prospect, and he said, you know, I just feel really blessed for the opportunity. And the fact that the coaches suggested the move over, you, know, you could tell how grateful he was that they found a spot for him. Camped will run. Roddy, it is a little bit of be careful what you wish for because instead of playing five snaps per game, he's played almost 900 snaps this season, probably over 900 now. And he admitted to us, yeah, I'm a little tired going into week 13. It's incredible. The average offense runs about 60 plays a game. He plays about 80. Camp downfield. He's got to Shante Jones. First down, Iowa State. Jones, the sophomore out of Cincinnati who had two touchdown catches against K-State last year. Yeah, this was a great adjustment to the ball downfield. And Nickelback, Cree Moore was in coverage, and Jones just wanted it more. Another red zone chance for Iowa State. in motion. Kemp rolling to his right. Slides inside the 10. There's just no one there and several of the Kansas State defenders were lost. They didn't even know where the ball was at. They all kind of moved to the defensive right and Kemp saw some open grass and decided to take it. Now you've got a second and short situation. Here's the deal. They've got two outstanding red zone targets. You've heard me talk about it. Alan Lazard at 6'5", Team Butler at 6'6". These guys are nightmares in the red zone. And they are both lined up. Kent, end zone, incomplete. Coverage there by Denzel Goolsby. 
The pass was intended for Murdoch, and it's third and six from the nine. That's great coverage. And um, excellent job there from Denzel Goofy to track it down. And you watch him here. He utilized the back of the end zone here. We like to call that a defensive back, the 12th defender. Force everything over the top and make that window small for a quarterback to have to drop it in. And though that should have been caught by Murdoch, it was great coverage by Denzel. Lazard at the bottom of your screen. Kemp floats one up for the end zone. Murdoch holds it in. And Iowa State takes the lead. Outstanding execution by the quarterback, Kyle Kemp. And when we see this replay, you will see a pump fake. Originally, we're going to the wide receiver here. Archie Murdoch, who just had a drop, comes back on a double move. And Kemp just throws him open. Much like I said earlier, he threw it into a space, allowed Murdoch to get under it and to catch the ball. Very difficult for defensive backs to be able to cover once that happens. As it appears as though, appears as though Iowa State is going to go for two here. You like the call? I do. I, I think the way they just drove the ball downfield, that was something that we did not see from this Iowa State offense in the first half. They've got command right now on this particular drive. Why not go for it? To make it a seven-point game. Incomplete intended for Jones. And instead, Iowa State settles for just six. They get in the end zone for the first time. Kyle kept his 12th touchdown pass of the season. It's the fifth TD for Marchie Murdoch. Kansas State's on-campus memorial to the fallen soldiers of World War II. You see the tags of honor. The memorial was dedicated in 2011. A chance for Byron Pringle, who took one back last week. And Pringle this time taken down at the 16-yard line. A 65-degree day in the Little Apple in the 101st meeting between Iowa State and K-State. Iowa State gives up less than 20 points per game in the Big 12. And when you look at Big 12 offenses, that says a lot. It's amazing. Kansas State today has managed less than 55 yards so far. How did the Wildcats get their offense going? I think the first thing is to get their quarterback, his athleticism activated, meaning he needs to be able to run the football. And the second part of that is they're dropping numbers back. And because of that, the Kansas State wide receivers have to do a better job of finding soft spots in the zone to get open. And then once that happens, Skylar Thompson has to be as sharp as he was last week, finding those targets and getting him the football. Thompson today just three out of six, 12 yards. It was 10 of 13 for 203 last week. Justin Silman, not much running room as we check in with Chris. Dominique Heath pushed out of bounds by Willie Harvey, a gain of seven. It's third and one now for Kansas State. Wildcats just two out of six on third down today. Yeah, but you, you heard me say, you asked me the question, how do they start to pick up some yardage, move the chains? That time there, everybody went deep. So what they did was they checked down to Dominique Heath. That may be an option for them moving forward. It's to allow this team to drop back, check down, and then allow your players to work in space. That was the longest pass play for Kansas State. On the ground, it's a first down and more. Silman into Iowa State territory as he rips off a 30-yard run. That was a perfect play call there from Dana Dimmel. The blitz, as you will see, will be coming to the defensive right side. And they popped this one right out of the back of the offensive right, which allowed him to be patient to get through that hole. And Justin Silman with a big run, the young man from Tulsa, Oklahoma, trying to do work in the backfield, and that's exactly what the Wildcats needed on third down. First and ten from the 45 of Iowa State. Six and a half to play here in the third. 
Back to Stillman. No game. Joel Lanning, the first to meet him. Lanning continues to be everywhere. Well, when I watched this kid, his his offensive mind has really opened up a part of his defensive game that defensive players work their entire lifetime to try to figure out. Dissecting plays, reading where things are going. He plays the middle linebacker position like a quarterback. There are times where he'll jump the ball before anybody else has even moved on the defense. Thompson, and it's incomplete intended for Heath. It's funny because when we talked to Joel Lanning, he said when he played quarterback, he played quarterback like a linebacker. Yeah, he did, and I mean, this kid did it all at Ankeny, Iowa. You see baseball, wrestling, football, just a complete superstar. Started 14 games between 15 and 16, where he had some impressive wins, including Mike Longhorns. And then now, the transition to middle linebacker has been outstanding. Third down and ten, Kansas State. Skyler Thompson to throw. As time on the drag route, Isaiah Zuber is going to be shy of the marker. Fourth down and two, and a decision now for Kansas State. Yeah, Skyler said, come on, and I think this team is. They are want to run the football here. We've seen in, in the past, well, now they're bringing in their big boys as Demo comes onto the field along with their tight end. And in those situations, look, right now what I'm thinking is I'm thinking quarterback run. I'm thinking you give Skyler an opportunity to find a small crease, get right in behind Winston Dimmel, and pick up this yardage. But you need your offensive line to reset the line of scrimmage and get a great push. Thompson will run, bounces to the outside, in an ambush, and stopped. We have not said his name a lot today, but Kamari Moya, the leader of the secondary, the co-captain, he had fire in his hair to come up here and make this play. Watch him at the top of your screen. He just comes flying. And though he doesn't make the play, but he forces Skylar Thompson to have to stutter, which allowed the rest of the defense to rally around. Excellent fourth down stop for the Cyclones. And to be clear, he's not a redhead. <laughs> Here's the blitz. Lazard with the catch. Down he goes. It's a first down and a flag at the very end of the play. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number six against an eligible receiver. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, that's hard to ask. Jonathan Durham here, the DB, the sophomore at six foot, 185 pounds, to try to take on a 6'5, 222 pound grown man from Urbandale, Iowa. Alan Lazard, his length, his frame. You know, that's like an end one there. You know, the contact there, he still manages to catch the ball and move the chains. Alan Lazard, one of the top wide receivers in the country. Crony Amtrak's a defender and gets to the 40, a gain of nine. Sheldon Crony getting the most work he's had since becoming a Cyclone. Eight carries now, 38 yards. Really went unused in his first two seasons with Iowa State. And Iowa State has looked like a different team offensively. They've made great adjustments. Give Tom Manning, the offensive coordinator, credit for the way they've played here in the second half. Camp hit. Lazard comes down with it. A Sunday catch by the senior from Urbandale, Iowa. <laughs> he just rips the ball out of the air. His ability to leap and to catch the ball in one-on-one -on -one situations, to catch it in traffic. Watch how he just pulls the ball away here from the defensive back. Duke Shelley, admirable coverage, but when you're taking on a beast and an animal like that who's approaching 100 yards on the day, you're gonna lose some of those matchups. A two-time captain, a legacy player. His dad was a Cyclone cornerback in the early 90s.
Tony cuts it back. And finally dumped inside the 25. And, and as we talked about the, wing, the wingspan, the difference here, look at the height comparison here between Hakeem Butler, Alan Lazar, Jonathan Durham, and Duke Shelley. And I was a 5A corner. I know the types of challenges it prevents here. Sometimes they're just going to make their plays on God-given ability and size. There's nothing you can do about it if you're Durham or Duke Shelley. How frustrating was was that for you? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you've got to get up, get your mind right, have a short memory, and get back in the huddle and ready to play because they're coming back at you. Here's Warren. Former Big 12 freshman of the year moves the pile for a first down. Mike Warren originally committed to Matt Campbell when Campbell was at Toledo, then flipped it to Iowa State, and then shortly after, Matt Campbell became his head coach. Ganesha, I really like to see Warren and Crony on the, in this drive really been running physically. They've been running over defenders and breaking tackles. That's what they lose with David Montgomery, his ability to break tackles. But these two guys are picking it up in his absence. Now back to Warren, who ran for 1,300 yards a couple of years ago. Fourth trip inside the 20 for Iowa State. A couple of field goals. But they got a touchdown last time out. Kansas State Less than 100 yards of total offense so far. The opportunities have not been there for Bill Snyder's team. We have played three quarters in the Little Apple. Iowa State takes a five-point lead to the fourth. A one-possession game as we go to the fourth quarter. And both of these teams have been in their share of close games. Iowa State two and three, Kansas State two and four. Cyclones with a win today would set a school record for most conference wins in a season. Kansas State looking to clinch a winning record in 2017. Crony finds his way to the 11. A third down coming up and you go back to the last score for Iowa State. They got a touchdown, went for two, didn't get it. So now a field goal, and it's still a one-possession game. Yeah, I was shocked that Kemp didn't go to one-on-one -on -one coverage with both Hakeem Butler and Alan Lazar to his left. He opted to do a swing pass to the short side of the field. And now you're in a third-down situation. Lazar at the top of your screen, one-on-one. -on -one. There's the blitz. Kemp finds Ryan. He's got a first down, tried to stay inbounds, forced out by Goolsby. He'll move the chains. It's first and goal, Iowa State. Good rhythm there on the throw from Kemp. Just to speed out there from the slot, out of Ryan. And when you watch him on film, this kid can run routes. He does a great job of separating from defenders. And then there, the wiggle at the end. He can make you miss. Big time catch there from Trevor Ryan. That was Cree Moore who forced him out. Kemp stays in from the three. No Joel Lanning. Kemp to throw. End zone has his man. Touchdown, Hakeem Butler. What, 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 to try? what did you say to him? I don't even remember, but it wasn't smart. Whatever it was. <laughs> the question is, did Jerry talk back before or after he He didn't you? even know my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was an older version of Jerry <laughs> no Rice, doubt, right? Yeah. No All right, later tonight on ESPN, it is Clemson and South Carolina. There should be some trash talking. Big rivalry game, obviously. Clemson has won three straight in this series. South Carolina had won the previous five. And the Gamecocks are in the top 25. Will Muschamp is building something. 
and they have a chance to detonate not just Clemson's chances in the college football playoff, but perhaps the ACC's chances. And that is a, a talented bunch. If you haven't watched them, they've got some bright young offensive stars. Short kick, Pringle from the 20. As a seam, Pringle across midfield. Down the sideline, Byron Pringle. Taken down at the 12, but there is a flag back at the 41-yard line. During the return, holding receiving team number 13. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Chase Johnston called for holding, negating a huge return by Pringle. And Thompson dancing around. He lost a yard, second down. Yeah, that time, Jaquan Bailey, who's the smaller of the defensive linemen at 6'2", 260, leads the team with five sacks. A young man from Jacksonville, Florida, is extremely fast. He uses his explosive speed to beat offensive tackles. That time he won, but he just couldn't quite track down Skyler Thompson as Skyler got away. It'll be second and 12. Skylar Thompson. Just five out of nine so far. 28 yards passing. Buying time. Underneath. That is caught. It's Warmack. And he spins across midfield. A penalty marker back at the 35-yard line. There is no foul for offensive pass interference on the play. First down. Well, that's a big break for K-State. They've been called on a few of those the last couple of weeks. Yeah, they needed that break there, and Skyler Thompson makes this play go. Only a three-man rush, and this is what you see out of Iowa State's defense. Joel Lanning adds to um, the rush, but Skyler Thompson's ability to keep his eyes downfield and to make plays, even when he's pressured on the move outside of the pocket, is what shows you that this kid could be special one day. Zuber with the catch at the 30. And he is slow to get up. A big hit by DeAndre Payne. They stayed already down a receiver in Dalton Schoen. Thompson dropped this end coverage magnificently. Zuber still down, and the big hit came from the cornerback. Kansas State and Iowa State began playing each other 100 years ago, 1917. K State has won nine straight. Bill Snyder. Has not lost to the Cyclones in his second stint as the Wildcats head coach. As Warmack picks up three. And two years ago, Iowa State in this building had a 35-14 halftime lead. And Kansas State blanked Iowa State in the second half en route to a 38-35 win. That was before Matt Campbell and that was the game that really cost Paul Rhodes his job. Lomax on the Wildcat. Across the 20 and first down. Dalvin Warmack has really provided a spark here for them on this drive with rushes along with the big catch that he had when Thompson broke the pocket. Zuber back into the game after getting shaken up. Give him four, second down. That's an extracurriculars now. Isaiah Zuber from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Grew up a Kansas State fan in the Peach State. Guys, I'm from Stone Mountain, Georgia, and I can tell you there's not a lot of Kansas State fans, but <laughs> Kansas State certainly got a good one with Isaiah Zuber. I 
shot clock at three. At two. They beat the play clock. Wormack on the cutback. And spins forward for another four. Third and short coming up. And Wormack was the spark two weeks ago when he ran for a career high 96 yards against West Virginia. Wasn't really much of a factor last week. He's been the spark plug for this offense again today. Yeah, he's a little jitterbug. 5'8", 187. He's like trying to catch the feather and win. And he's really allowed them here to now be in a third and short situation out of the Wildcat. He'll run it again. Wormack has a first down. Finally subdued by Wagner at the four-yard line. And Kansas State in business first and goal. Watch the effort here from Kamari Cotton Moya. To try to tackle this kid. You know, I just said it. Trying to tackle, trying to catch a feather in the wind. He just flat out misses him. And that's what happens when you have, when you're short in stature like that, but when you've got good feet. He's very shifty. And they, they're going back to the Wildcat with him there, which you would assume he's going to run right behind Winston Dimmel again. Zach Reuter in motion. Ormack gets the block from Dimmel. And stood up by Wagner for the Cavalry comes to hold second and goal. Well, Dalvin Warmack didn't have, didn't get a lot of playing time in the first half, guys. So part of that may be the fact that you've got fresh legs and not just fresh legs, but Ahmad, you said it, quick fresh legs. So these guys on defense, as they're starting to get a little tired, Dalvin Warmack came in without any tread on the tires. Good point, Roddy. Now they bring Skyler back in the game, but they're still opting to stay in that Wildcat look. Pringle in motion. Wormack looking for running room. Not much there. Wagner and the landing on the stop. No gain. Third and goal. Well defended. And Brian Peavy is the one who made this play. He was blocked by the tight end for Kansas State and just put, completely disregarded the block and got to the play. That was outstanding by Brian Peavy. And now on a third and short situation, I'd like to see them put Skylar Thompson back as quarterback, open up the passing game. Now you at least have that threat there. It appears as though that's what will happen here as Skylar Thompson comes under center. Barnes the deep back. It's a toss to Barnes. He'll throw, touchdown, Winston Dibble! How about that? His dad, the offensive coordinator, and the running back coach, Dana Dimmel, drawing up the play for his son, who often releases out of the backfield, has exceptional hands for a fullback, and he just does a good job. The defense never saw it coming. And Alex Barnes tapping into the old Tim Tebow there with the jump pass, which was successful. Excellent drive by the Wildcats as it results in a touchdown. 68-yard drive, 13 plays, taking up more than six minutes of the clock, and Kansas State has made it a one-possession game. Alex Barnes, a weight room warrior and a sci-fi nerd, capable of this TD pass to Winston Dimmel. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. It's a five-point lead for Iowa State, looking for its sixth conference win, eighth win of the season. Kansas State looking to clinch a winning season. Skyler Thompson, numbers not as gaudy as last week. He's been held in check. Does have a rushing touchdown. Kyle Kemp, a couple of TD passes. Kansas State, less than 200 yards of total offense. Special teams set up one score. The last drive, the Wildcats used Wildcat to move the ball down the field. They did. They went quite a bit to Dalvin Warmack, who gave them a spark early on in that drive with some early runs, a big catch. And then the catch from Isaiah Zuber might have been the play of the drive there as he makes a big catch, was blown up by DeAndre Payne, but still hauled it in. Kansas State looked tough and physical there on that drive. The Cyclones will bring it out to the 25. First and 10, Iowa State from the 25. Tony picks up about three. I wonder a couple of things. One, does the committee have the guts? Does the committee have the guts 
to leave Bama out because, and I know every season is in a vacuum, but if anybody has earned the benefit of the doubt that past is prologue, it is Alabama. To me, they become the ultimate case for the subjectiveness of the committee. The eye test, if you will. Absolutely. If Alabama's in, it is on the eye test. And I think it makes it easier this year because you're going to have so many two-loss teams in the mix for one-loss Alabama to get in. Kemp slides down. It'll set up a big third down for Iowa State. And there is a flag at the end of the play. I think it's the right call. There is no foul on the play for a late hit. Third down. Now, everybody that's a Cyclone fan is going to say that's home cooking. <laughs> and, and, and if you're Kansas State, you know, you watch it here. It didn't appear to me. And, and maybe he could have stopped a little bit more, in my opinion. Right now, he initiates on sliding. You've got to pull off there if you're Trent tanking. And then the shoulder, perhaps to the head, might have been the reason why a lot of Cyclone fans wanted that call. Kemp on third and long, over the middle, has his receiver, Hakeem Butler! And he's got a first down for the Cyclones! Injured Wildcat is Jade Kirby. Anish, that was another NFL throw. I mean, wow. I talked about his ability to throw guys open, to put the ball in a location where there's open space. We saw him on the Murdoch touchdown, throw it to the corner of the end zone where no one was at. Watch the ball placement here from Kyle Kemp. It was outstanding. They drop in coverage. Perhaps Elijah Sullivan didn't get enough depth, but he found the hole. And Kyle Kemp put a ball on the money to his big target, his tallest target, and Hakeem Butler, 6'6", 219 from Baltimore. What a big-time throw and conversion for the Cyclones. And if they continue at this pace, that play could be the play of the game in terms of closing this ball game out. Butler last week against Baylor had a get-off-my-plane touchdown. Oh my goodness, it was me. Yeah, he turned into Optimus Prime and basically <laughs> trucked. <laughs> right through the Baylor secondary and comes up with a huge play. Kansas State with all three timeouts. Cyclones run some clock. Crony up the middle, breaks a tackle. And he's to the 49. When do you start using your timeouts if you're K-State? Well, they just used one. Roddy Jones, our field analyst. Roddy, how would you manage this sequence if you're Matt Campbell? I would be aggressive. You've got one-on-one -on -one with Hakeem Butler and Alan Lazard. You haven't had that all day. You take a shot here on second down. If you don't get it, then you can bring in the land ram package and go with Joel Lanning. I respectfully disagree. Put it on the ground. Out of the diamond formation. They will throw. Kemp. Incomplete for Butler that stops the clock. That's why you don't do it. You want to force them to use their timeout. Now you put yourself in an extremely difficult situation. Run the ball. They've already shown they're going to call another timeout. Then you bring in landing. Then you decide to either make them use another timeout or take your shot on a shorter distance. I don't like the play call there. I would prefer to see them put it on the ground and run the football. Can I Third and six, here's the blitz. Kemp, downfield for Lazard. Broken up by Shelly. There is a flag at the end of the play, and this might be P.I. against the Duke Shelly. Referees huddling. Twice today they've thrown a flag and picked it up. There is no foul for defensive pass in the Fourth down. That is the third time a flag has been thrown and picked up. And it's now fourth down for Iowa State. And Kansas State will get the ball back with two timeouts. You do two consecutive throws that are incomplete passes. If you run the football, you're getting ready now to punt the ball inside of a minute, perhaps. With them now... Not having 
zero timeouts. Was that I the don't right like call? the play call. Was that the right call by the well, you take the, And like I said, you could have played through it because I thought the contact was necessary considering you're taking on a monster like Alan Lazard. Downing kicks it away. He fair catch signal, makes it at the 12. So both of these teams have played so many nail biters, and here we go. Two minutes to go. Redshirt freshman quarterback with a chance to finish the regular season on a high note. Matt Campbell in his defense looking to move one step closer to a school record in wins. The 20-yard line clock will run. K-State, 99 total yards the first three quarters, 83 on their last drive. So they are starting to find offensive rhythm. That was a good first down completion there to get this thing going. Got to pick up the pace. Three-man rush. Thompson rolling to his right. Barnes, sideline, makes the catch, gets out of bounds, and it's a first down for Kansas State. At the 27, clock stops with 121. Anish, you mentioned that Texas Tech win that Kansas State had got. Kansas State got about three weeks ago. Skylar Thompson, this was a similar position. With under two minutes, he was able to drive them down the field, then to tie the game, which they eventually won. But Skylar Thompson's been in this position before, and being at home, I think, will help the young quarterback. Redshirt freshman from Independence, Missouri. Cyclones rush three with a quarterback spot. Thompson over the middle. That's caught by Zach Reuter. Just his third reception of the year. It's a first down at the 40. It will momentarily stop the clock. They've got to prevent Thompson from breaking pocket to his right. He has devastated this defense when he comes to his right. Contain him. Over the middle. Reuter again, breaking tackles to the 35. He has more receiving yards on this drive than he did all season. Clock again runs. The referees have spotted the ball. Wildcats with two timeouts. Thompson under pressure. Downfield and he overthrew his receiver, Isaiah Zuber. Oh, he missed it. And had it not been from for the pressure from Jaquan Bailey, he'd have had time to set his feet and pick this defense apart. Skylar Thompson wishing he had that one back. But Ahmad, you mentioned it. He'd been going to his right all game, and he's done a great job throwing on that side. That time gets pushed to his left, and an overthrow is the result. Byron Pringle does not have a catch today after a monster game last week. He's the big play threat. Over the middle, Zuber able to hold on. It's a first down at the 18, 33 seconds to go. Clock stops. Wildcats have two timeouts, and they will use one here. Ouch. They run a dagger route, running the safeties to blow off coverage out of the slot, and brought Zuber right underneath, which put, which put the defense in a tough spot. Because now do you carry deep and open up underneath? And that's exactly what happened. And Skylar Thompson, who, bob who bobbled the ball, the snap, you see that inside route drives the safeties high, and then it allows that little passing window on the inside. And look, I hate to go back to it. Now you've given them an opportunity with these timeouts to come back and to game plan against you. You would have preferred to put the young Redshirt freshman quarterback back in the line of scrimmage in a critical situation with no game planning, with no coach in his ear telling him what to do. And now I think if you're the Cyclone, you are on your heels, and this place is going to erupt if Skylar Thompson can come of age right here in front of the home crowd and pull off the victory. 
Kansas State trailed 19-7 in the fourth quarter. They came back from 21 down against Iowa State here two years ago. Thompson will step up and run. And he is tackled at the 14. The clock continues to run. And now a timeout. The Wildcats have used their final timeout. 24 seconds left. Could be a quarterback run. Play clock running down. Thompson to Heath. Makes his man miss, reaching. And he is marked down inside the one. You got Spike here. Get on the ball. 11 seconds to go. It's first and goal. The clock will start on the referee's signal. Thompson to the air for Pringle. Incomplete. I like that shot. It only took two seconds I like that off shot. the clock. I like that shot from offensive coordinator Dana Dimmel. Despite Byron Pringle not having a catch in this ball game. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage out there with he and DeAndre Payne. And I believe Skyler, he threw a safe ball. You're taught to throw that at the back pie line. Pringle just couldn't get to the football, but I like that shot. I agree with you, Amon. I like it too. And you're in a situation here where you can throw the ball one more time, and if it's incomplete, you have another shot as well. Great point. Thompson looking, changes direction, scrambling, end zone, touchdown! Isaiah Silver for the lead! And the win! the ability to extend plays. And while he's doing this in my head, I'm going, oh no, the freshman is making a tremendous mistake. He's going to run out all of the time. His strength is what won this game. His ability to extend plays. And which way did he originally break? To his left. He comes back to his comfort zone towards his right. That's a touchdown. And how about this? A touchdown is confirmed by Rule. By Rule, Kansas State. Must line up for the point after. My rule. And, and, and listen, Skylar Thompson, seven of nine for 78 yards and a touchdown. And if I am Kansas State, I kneel the ball here. I don't even give them a shot or a chance. All you're worrying about is the center quarterback exchange. What a ball game! Skylar Thompson, the redshirt freshman. Marching his team down the field in the final two minutes. Putting on that Superman cape. He'll take a knee and Kansas State ends its regular season with an exclamation point. Skyler Thompson. Welcome to stardom. Oh my goodness. The lion in winter still roars. <laughs> Bill Snyder had a few magic tricks. There was the jump pass from Barnes to Dimmel. His defense for the second straight week comes up with a huge fourth quarter stop and then the young freshman Skyler Thompson leading his team down the field 
in the final two minutes and finding Isaiah Zuber in the back of the end zone as time expired. I'm sure it's going to be a quarterback competition <laughs> with Thompson and Alex Delton in the spring. But Skylar Thompson banked a lot of currency, not just today, but over the last few games of this regular season. 20 to 19, K State in dramatic fashion. We still have Civil War coming up on ESPN2, but first, let's catch your breath with Chris Cotter in the studio.